Well, hello, and welcome to Circus History Live. I'm Bruce Hawley, president of the Circus Historical Society. Circus History Live is produced monthly by the CHS. This is our 30th episode. Can't believe it. We've been doing so many, but we're up to 30, 30 episodes. The recordings of previous sessions of Circus History Live are available on the CHS YouTube channel. Our featured guests tonight are Peggy Adler and DeBerma Burnham, who will be discussing the Pallenberg Wonder Bears. Emil, Emil Pallenberg's bicycle riding Wonder Bears were a major attraction in circuses, vaudeville, and movies in the United States and Europe for almost 50 years. And now here's the host of Circus History Live, Chris Berry. Chris. Thanks, Bruce. And uh, thank you, Peggy and DeBerma Burnham, for joining us tonight. Uh, Emil Emil. Pollenberg, as you know, uh, was one of the finest, greatest bear trainers in the world. Uh, here in the United States, after uh, moving here from Germany, Peggy and de Burma have written an unbelievable book about the history, in part because de Burma's family has maintained so much of that content. So I'm just going to kind of throw it to you first, Peggy. How did you come up with this idea to write this book about the Pollenberg bears? Um, after I met DeBerma, De, or who I call Dib, uh, when, when I was doing a book on the history of Clinton, the history of her family was so fascinating. And the whole idea that there were actually bears that lived here and were trained here in Clinton, Connecticut, was beyond belief. And uh, then I embarked on the project. With That's fantastic. So DeBerma, you just got this phone call one day asking about uh, your family. Is that kind of what, how it happened? Um. Peggy had interviewed me for her book on Clinton and um, because there's a couple of pages in there about the Pallenberg bears. And then we became friends and I, after, and I proofread that book helped with that. And we became friendly, went for walks together and so forth. And um, mentioned that I had quite a bit of material on my grandparents that my mother had saved over the years. And my grandmother clipped articles and, photographs and contracts and Peggy's ears perked up when she realized that we had contracts and I had contracts and then one thing led to another and we started getting together and going over the material and decided to do a book. Well let's get right into it here. I, you know as I mentioned earlier and I'm going to put up a, uh, a photograph here this is a classic poster that was used uh, on the Barnum and Bailey Circus probably around 19. 14 to 1916 to promote the Wonder Bears. Um, they're doing amazing tricks here. Peggy, why don't you tell us first about, you know, what, what we would be seeing if we went and saw Barnum and Bailey right around uh, 110 years ago or so. Well, if you saw the Wonder Bears, they could roller skate, ride bicycles, walk the tightrope, play musical instruments, and uh, many other, many other amazing feats. They really could, couldn't they? And so, this was kind of a family affair, right? I mean, Emil Hallenberg's brother was also very active, involved uh, back in Germany, really with the Hagenbeck uh, Animal Park, right? That's correct. Um, Carl Hagenbeck, Hagenbeck was friends with um, their father in Cologne. And um, the boys... Um, frequented that zoo they were fortunate to live near a zoo and they grew up with interesting pets and then they started going regularly to the zoo and um developed quite a affinity for some of these animals and that's a picture of uh, joseph pallenberg the eldest brother um as you can see he's very comfortable with the animals and some people are you know, like a horse whisperer that have a sort of a knack with with animals. And that was the case with with these young boys. So this would have been your great uncle, Joseph. My uh, great uncle, uh, Joseph. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, you think about uh, back in Germany at that time, as we talked about the Hagenbach uh, animals that were, were raised there. But um, your grandfather, and I think this is a picture of him. I think this is him, right? About 1895 mm -hmm. or so. Mm hmm to the right yes With that the was right. part of the part part of kaiser's army they they had compulsory military service all the young men had to serve and that is my grandfather there to the right mm -hmm, of the so, so peggy, peggy how did they get over here from germany and how did that all come about uh they were performing in russia 
and uh, Martin Beck, who um, was a manager as well as owner of the Orpheum Vaudeville Circuit and owned theaters, including the Martin Beck Theater in New York, which is named for him in New York, um, signed Emil for six months of contracts on one day while they were in Russia. And wow. so they came over on um, on a ship to Ellis Island in 1914, arrived in the spring of 1914. And their first stop on the Orpheum circuit was Chicago. With trained bears. <laughs> yes, with three, with three trained bears. They had um, Ella, who was the first one to ride a bicycle, which you have a picture of that you'll be showing. Um, Tona, who they got around the same time as Ella. And then they picked up the third one, Sasha, in, in Russia. That's a wonderful picture there of my grandfather. He's he was a very dapper dresser, and that's him yeah. with the his, with a young baby bear, bear cub. Yeah, I mean, if people ever wonder how young the bears were when they acquired them, they got them as infants and bottle fed them. This is a and pretty that, early photo too, isn't it? Yes, that's an early photo, and he he always wore those boots, and that's an early. Um, prop that they used with the pea on it with the bear on top of it yes mm -hmm. Another, uh, this is a shows one of the roller skating bears early on I guess mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yes so uh, you know it's it's amazing uh, and just to kind of talk about the research that goes into something like this now you obviously have a lot of family history uh, yourself to Burma but mm -hmm. hey you just uh, you had to go and find the the ship that they came across on right and then check I them out. Yes, I joined MyHeritage.com, and not only did I find the ship's manifest, but I found that that uh, about the Netherlands, because Catherine's from Holland, the Netherlands, that um, have all of their vital statistic, statistics online. And that was how it enabled me to be able to build the timeline that go in the book that goes from 1854 up through 2018, because... It had when she was born, where her when her first husband was born, when her son was born, everything is there. Well, let's talk about Catherine a little bit. Now, she mm -hmm. uh, obviously did not come from a circus background, but uh, she was very enamored with this young bear trainer. I think so. <laughs> this is your this, grandmother, right, De Burma? This is my grandmother. I think so. Um, I think it was um, kindred spirits coming together and... Um, something magical happened and um they yeah. fell in love yes she, yeah she worked with her husband in their inn in an inn in, in holland and she ran off with the bear trainer amel pallenberg she was 21 he was 24 leaving mm -hmm. behind her husband mm -hmm. and two-year-old son and a young son yeah that is it was amazing. a family it was a family run in yeah. yes so uh, they they came to the United States. They worked for the Orpheum Circuit. Um, obviously, we talked about Martin Beck a little bit earlier. But this telegram, and again, it's amazing that uh, all of these things have survived from October the 8th, 1914. Uh, tell us a little about that, Peggy. Well, this is a telegram that Emil Pallenberg received. Um, after John um, Ringling saw their act and decided he wanted to sign them for the 1915, starting with the 1915 season. And so it looks like something's been written on the back here where he wants $300 a week, right? Which was a lot of money in those a lot, days. A lot of money. <laughs> yeah. But uh, obviously he had a lot of mouths to feed too, right? That's they, true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yes. So He was so, a one-man uh, operation. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, you know, because we are interested in circus history, uh, here is that first contract uh, signed yeah. by John Ringling, signed by Emil Pallenberg. That's it, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so um, then he and Catherine got married, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Probably around that same time. I think this they, is. Uh, well, they got married November 9th, nineteen fifteen, in New York yep. City. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, and they they never really uh, went back overseas to perform after that, did they? Actually, they did. Uh, did didn't they go to Scotland? They could have. Yes, I believe yes. you're right. Mm -hmm. They 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 went to um, over to the British Isles. Mm -hmm. So you know, I want to talk a little bit more specifically about uh, this act. And um, you know, what again, what we would have seen, we don't see a lot of animal acts here in the United States these days. This particular photograph here 
uh, dates from about 1924, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, Center Ring Act. Uh, we've got one of the bears up on a on a on a tightrope there. Uh, really uh, amazing. And these bears, of course, were never in a cage either, were they? On a regular basis? No, no, no. no they were never in a cage. I'm and not sure if this was the original Madison Square Garden where this is. This but... is under canvas, actually. Um, oh, okay. It's this... in a tent. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only time they would ever have been what anyone. We, that what I would have considered a cage is if they were transported a great distance and then they were in one of those cages that you have a picture of that was in their backyard. Sure. Yep. But other uh, than that, no, they weren't. And probably even uh, when they were first with Barnum and Bailey back about 1915 uh, or so, they probably, uh, those bears were probably in the parade too. But um, this is another great picture taken probably about that same time. Uh, you can yes. see Catherine. And a, she was known for her costumes. My grandmother was known for her costumes, known for her poise. And that is a wonderful early picture of them and the back circus lot with uh, a baby bear cub. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, they were, this was during World War One, and obviously they came from Germany. He had actually served in the Kaiser's army at one mm -hmm. point. So, um, you know, this is, I guess this is out of Billboard or one of the other publications about the fact uh, that he had been granted permission to, to stay in the United States during the war. Uh, this was in a Bridgeport, Connecticut newspaper. Terrific. So, so again, um, it must have been difficult uh, for them during World War I because of the anti-German sentiment that was going on in the United States. Yes. And they performed under the name of Palin, P-A-L-L-E-N, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. yeah, she was know, not. She was not from Germany. Just Emil was. Catherine was started from Holland, Katerina, and she was from Holland. So De Burma, that's it's an unusual name. It's the same mm -hmm. name that your mother had. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how that came about. My grandmother's three best friends in the circus, and there's they were Dixie Wilson, who wrote children's stories about the circus, as well as a book and that's Bird Millman, May Worth and Dixie Wilson were my grandmother's three best friends. And that picture is Lillian Leitzel, who was also a close friend. She was known as Leitzel, like Madonna or Cher. And she had very, very small feet. I think like a size one and a half or two size foot. But anyway, uh, my grandmother's three best friends were Dixie, Bird and May. And at a shower that was given for my grandmother when they were performing at Grauman's Chinese Theater, um, the it was decided, what were you going to name your, your baby? And someone suggested it was Harold Lloyd's mother, we think, mother who came up with the name at the shower to come up with the name De Burma, Dixie, Bird, and May for her three best friends. And for the circus historians and others on this uh, call, uh, the book that you referred to that Dixie Wilson wrote, Where the World Rolls Up at Night, is a really interesting... Where uh, the World Folds Up at Night, yes. And yeah. I have a copy of that. Yes, I do. Yes, that's a yeah, wonderful book. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very scarce book to find. If you have an opportunity to read it, I encourage everyone on the call to do that. It is really a snapshot and a memoir of uh, what it was like to be on the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus in the 1920s. And there are a lot of references uh, to all of the people who were friends with your grandparents on there. Mm -hmm. And and of course, uh, this is another great picture from, I think, your collection here of uh, the great May Worth, uh, the great writer. Yes. You know, whenever, whenever I look at pictures of May Worth, and this is a great full-length view of her, you can see how strong her legs were. Uh, one of the things that she would do, of course, was she would do a somersault onto the back of a horse while her feet were in baskets. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really quite an amazing uh, act that May Worth had. And of course, she was a very, very close friend of your grandmother, Catherine uh, Allenberg. And her family was from Australia. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, here's another uh, another great picture of, uh, I guess that's a bird moment that's sitting down there. With yes, in a, in a beautiful costume. All these costumes were handmade. And that's May Worth. Yes. Yeah, Bird Melman, uh, obviously, uh, for those of you who might not know, one of the great uh, height wire uh, acts of the late 1919s into the 1920s. And again, another uh, wonderful uh, 
friend of your your family. But I want to get back really to the to the act itself. And when you talk about uh, you know you talked about your grandmother's costumes. Again, here's a great example of it. This would have probably been uh, either on the Barnum and Bailey Circus at the end of right before uh, they combined in 1919, or possibly right after. Um, you know, that's a pretty good sized bear that she's there with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And all the bears were females. And uh, I, my grandfather, well, they were easier to work with. And she didn't work with males. They were all females. And they were like, part, you know, almost like part of the family. They were, you know, with them all the time. You had, um, I know, a relationship with your, your grandparents. Your grandfather died in 1963. Um, but did they talk much about their life on the circus? They both talked with accents. They both did talk about their life in the circus. We had regular visitors here in Clinton from, from the circus. We were halfway between the Boston Garden and Madison Square Garden. And many, many uh, people, such as the Bradnas, um, came and Mayworth was here, visited Clinton. Um, um, and they did talk about it. They a little bit, yes. And we and some of the things, some of the props were still here at that time. My grandfather made stilts for the bears and he made stilts for the grandchildren. <laughs> speaking, cool. speaking of props, so this is uh one of the classic uh scenes that the Pollenbergs had mm -hmm. in their act with uh, a rowboat and uh, this particular bear, I don't know which one it was, would actually row the boat around with your grandmother sitting in it, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that's Martha. Martha or Lily. Yeah, Martha. Mm -hmm. I think that's Martha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really a, a unique um, piece of apparatus to be used during the circus and obviously something that people remembered long after they had gone home. Um, you talked a little bit earlier about some of your grandmother's costumes. Uh, this looks like a composite photograph, but wow, what a what a piece of wardrobe that she is wearing. Yes, yes, the boots and the hat and um, beautiful. Yes, it does look like a composite, but it's it's very very fancy and spectacular, and that's what the circus was known for. These um, people from all all parts. It was unusual. They came. Many circus performers came from different parts of the world. And they spoke different languages, yet they all came together to put on this beautiful circus. And you said that her background was originally Russian, right? Dutch. Dutch. She was born and raised. She was born and raised in Holland. She always spoke with a with a little accent, but she was very good with languages. She was fluent in different languages. Mm -hmm. So, Peggy, when you uh, were learning about the Pallenberg family, I mean, obviously, this was these were people that you, you know, a few years ago had really no knowledge of whatsoever. I mean, you must have been fascinated by this story in order to write this book with de Burma. Correct. I, I knew nothing about the family when I embarked on the project about the history of our town. And then when people told me about um, about them and that, that about de Burma, I contacted her and yes, I became more and more fascinated. And what, what I've discovered since then, since the book came out, was published. And because of the internet, which gives people a wider reach into around the world, is that there is another branch of the Pallenberg family that um, has now reconnected. And it was through a young man, uh, Leonardo Pallenberg, who is currently living in Italy where he grew up. And that's the Italian branch of the army, of the family, I mean. It's not that they're Italian, it's that the way back in the 1800s, there were brothers who created and manufactured furniture some for the Royal Prussian court. And one of them didn't want to be in the furniture business anymore. And so he sold his share. He was an artist. He wanted to be a painter and he went to live in Italy. And that's the other branch of the family. So I've done a family tree, two family trees and found where they connected back in the uh, mid 1800s. Very interesting. Now, um, your uncle, Catherine, uh, his name was Emil um, uh, Pallenberg also, not Emil Jr., but uh, this is a photograph of him, right? It was taken probably yes, uh, that's in, right. probably in about the nineteen early nineteen thirties, late nineteen twenties. Yes, and that's my mother's brother. Yes, that's Emil Emil Junior with a big cub on a circus lot. Mm -hmm. And here's a picture of your uncle of and your mother, right? My mother, the first to Burma. That's her. That's the first to Burma. And she was born in in twenty eight. Did they did they um, travel with the circus at all at that time, or they were at home in Connecticut? 
um, Emil, who you see there, um, was boarded with uh, a German family here in Clinton while my grandparents were out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. They advertised in a newspaper for someone to take care of their son while they traveled with the circus. And the Winters family here in Clinton responded. And so when they were traveling, he stayed here in Clinton uh, with their son and family. And this is a picture of the front porch of the home in Clinton with the Winters and my grandparents are in the front with uh, their son, Emil. Mm -hmm. But your mother mom. traveled with the circus. My mother did yes. more, probably more, um, but uh, she was came a few few years later. Mm -hmm. And uh, Emil, uh, the younger Emil, Emil Jr., as you referred to him, he actually uh, performed with the circus too. And I know uh, in yes. the 1940s, uh, he kind of took over the act a little bit. And there's a there's a film that is available called Sensations of 1945. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of circus acts in it, including the Christiani family. But I know that uh, he has a pretty good pretty good summary of what uh, the Pallenberg Bear Act looked like in that movie too. Correct? Yes. 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 So That's if you give he it and his wife Susan and and Fu and Laura are the two bears that are in that act with them. Mm -hmm. if, if, again, if you get a chance to see a movie called Sensations of 1945, Deb Calloway is in it. Uh, it's got a lot of circus acts in it. Uh, you'll see the Pallenberg Act. But I want to talk a little bit about that whole Hollywood connection. Uh, the Pallenbergs were in a movie with Rudolph Valentino at one point, right, Peggy? Mm -hmm. and, yes, that was and the first they, movie they made. And then when Charlie Chaplin made his classic film, The Circus, Tell us a little bit about that opening at uh, Grauman's Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles. Okay, well, evidently Grauman's Chinese Theater used to have what they called a prologue, which was very similar for anyone who ever went to Radio City Music Hall back in the, up at least through the 1960s before the, that after the stage show, that, be, that there was a movie. And that, so uh, Radio City Music Hall also had a prologue, except they didn't call it that. Uh, I bought the movie The Circus on DVD and Dib and her husband came over to watch it and they were getting ready to go home and Dib said, let's watch some of the extras. So we watched the newsreel footage of the uh, silent newsreel footage of the, the premiere night and they had the Ballyhoo, the prologue acts taking bows and the last one was Dib's grandfather and her grandmother and one bear and she jumped out of the chair and she said this is my grandparents uh that's great and of course that you know the circus was one of charlie chaplin's uh great movies uh this is of course the program for the uh prologue there at the chinese theater and you can see on the left uh these acts that uh, you were talking about earlier included ed ed and Je jenny rooney uh you know obviously uh they were the Rooneys were a big part of the Ringling Circus back in the day. Uh, Ed Rooney is uh, a lot of times attributed to being the person who invented the aerial ballet. Jenny mm -hmm. Rooney, uh, way back, uh, you know, when they were doing the, the Cinderella spec, she was Cinderella in that spec. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Poodles Hannaford, who had become a, a movie star in his own right, uh, mm -hmm. also appeared live on stage that night. So yep. uh, if you get a chance to uh, take a look at that DVD, uh, be sure to watch the the extra shots in that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, because they they have Poodles Hannaford and each of the acts taking their bow. Mm -hmm. Fantastic! You know, it's such an unusual act, and I I kind of like for you to tell me a little bit about uh, the relationship with Jack Benny, the Pallenbergs, and Jack Benny, because it kind of went back to the radio show, and then it ended up on film, right? Yes, yeah, starting in nineteen in February nineteen thirty nine. The people who scripted Jack Benny's radio show scripted in a bear they named Carmichael. And this fictitious bear lived in the basement of Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. And uh, Carmichael was in at least 20 or more episodes. And he would growl. <laughs> and he would growl. And the growl was done by Mel Blanc, by the way, I found out. <laughs> so um, in 1940, there was a movie called Buck Benny Rides Again where Jack Benny's playing a cowboy and um, they needed a bear to play Carmichael. And so Mishka, who was one of the Pallenberg bears, was powdered white. 
to, and taken by train from Clinton, Connecticut to New York, then to Chicago, I believe it was, and then out to L.A. to be in the film. And there's a del absolutely delightful photograph of Jack Benny walking Mishka, a.k.a. Carmichael, in his co in, in Benny wearing his cowboy costume on the on the Paramount lot with Carmichael um, or Mishka at a goldfish pond. And so for anybody who thinks these bears were treated poorly, here's this bear being walked on a leash in the boat, you know, and Jack Benny's just very nonchalantly standing there while Mishka looks in the goldfish pond. Very was comfortably. There, mm -hmm. yeah. Was there a story about uh, the filming of that movie and they wanted to bring uh, Mishka out and maybe, uh, I think you know where I'm going, right, Peggy? They, they needed retakes. They wanted, they wanted Mishka to come back and Dib's grandfather wired them and said, she's hibernating and paramount said their researchers looked it up and the polar bears don't hibernate <laughs> whereupon her grandfather said well you'll have to tell that to carmichael because she's not going to change her mind <laughs> and the original contract had something in it about an ostrich and my grandfather said oh yes i can train an ostrich but some somehow that <laughs> fell by the wayside so there wasn't an ostrich in the movie <laughs> You know, uh, you take a look at uh, kind of what was going on in show business in the in the United States uh, during that time, and obviously this was a big act. I mean, they had uh, to take care of these bears and so forth. But the reality is that um, vaudeville was kind of on its way out. Uh, but you still had uh, the Pallenbergs doing their own thing. I mean, they were not they were they did appear in a lot of circuses. Uh, 1943, they appeared in that special circus that uh, Ringling put together at Madison Square Garden called Spangles that mm -hmm. summer. Uh, but they were also a part of um, they were also a part of a lot of vaudeville acts, right? And this was probably one of the uh, brochures mm -hmm. that they have uh, with their Western and Amusement Service, which I guess was probably uh, an agent that they used out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Again, yes. you know, I think that it, wherever this ad would have appeared, you would see a couple of things that kind of jump out at me. One of them, of course, is the costumes. The other is the stunts that the bears do. And, of course, uh, that poster at the bottom for Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey, which showed that, you know, they had uh, been with the greatest show on earth, which, of course, uh, was, you know, quite an endorsement in itself. Well, also, also the bicycles. The bicycles, which my grandfather made. And patented. Yes. And we're going to we're going to talk about that a little bit because, um, you know, it is really unusual. You know, we think of uh, a bicycle not necessarily being something that you would patent. But here is uh, the velocity yes. for animals that uh, he actually did get a patent on this, didn't he? Yes. He mm -hmm. applied in 1915 and the patent came through in 1916. And, uh, you know, obviously it looks pretty much like a regular bicycle, but it, it must have something there that is a little bit different um, that allows it to, I guess, probably raise the handlebar at what it looks like to me, which is something that's very common today. Well, it's, it, it enables the bear to be able to lean forward. And there you've got, uh, this is an early bicycle. This is Ella, the, the day that she successfully rode a bicycle without any spills. Um, in 1908, on the sidewalk at the Cologne Zoo. On the walks of the Cologne Zoo, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. near a fountain. You, mm -hmm. you know, and, I, I want to, I want to take a, just a second to again thank everybody for joining us for this episode of Circus History Live. Circus History Live is a monthly presentation uh, presented by the Circus Historical Society. It's an opportunity for us to talk about not only the circus of the past, but also the circus of today, and in some cases even the future. Uh, if you're not a member of the Circus Historical Society already, I would encourage you to consider uh, joining. Just go to circushistory.org, and uh, there's information there. You can, whether you're in the United States or anywhere in the world, you can join the CHS. And uh, one of the benefits, of course, is our quarterly magazine bandwagon, which uh, is highly produced, uh, very well illustrated, and tells stories such as this one today of the Pallenberg Bears. But let's get right back into it, Peggy. So we sure. were talking a little bit about uh, the the bicycle bears because these were uh, really uh, kind of, well, it was his invention, literally, because he got the patent on it. Yes, well, the bicycle riding began with um, Emil and his younger brother, Christian, who used to go over to, by now, Joseph was a uh, sculptor 
who had a studio at the Cologne Zoo. And by studying the anatomy of various animals, he determined that he thought that a bear could be taught to ride a bicycle. And that was how his brother started. And they, they have the dual education system in Germany where they go to school and they apprentice for a um, career. And the, the two young teenagers would get up and ride their bicycles at three or four every morning and go over to the zoo to work with the bears. For two years they did. And uh, in 1908 is when, uh, when, when Ella successfully rode. I mean, I got to think that, you know, riding a bicycle, you've got to have the balance, too. So I don't imagine that every uh, bear had that capability, <laughs> being able to sit on that thing on two wheels. Well, how about one that's six feet high? That that <laughs> amazes me. I would certainly never get on a bicycle with seats six feet above the ground. And yet, <laughs> and yet um, they all did, including Snookums, his last bear. Mm -hmm. So this is a, uh, a different uh, bear. It's not on a bicycle, but uh, this is the, isn't this the rocking horse bear? This also is Pooh. Right? This is Pooh, who Ooh. I I believe, we've never, it's never been a certain, but I believe that Pooh from the onset was trained to be a biker because everything that she is on has wheels. Mm -hmm. And you can see the progression as she gets older and she was the first motorcycle riding bear. There she is again on a bicycle. And you can see the hand, the, the how the hand, uh, the paws of the bear are positioned over the handlebars, and that was something unique. That my grandfather worked with metal and had friends that worked with metal and helped him with this, making his design. So um, when you you talked about you know bicycle, and obviously the next thing that would follow a bicycle would have to be a motorcycle. This motorcycle. is food, right? there, There's Pooh, oh. and there's her name on it. There she is on her, her motorcycle. Really, uh, really interesting. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure that, uh, like I said, it's probably something that people really remembered after they had seen the show. Uh, this is Snookums. This is his last bear, right? That That's correct. He... Um, he and, and Catherine retired in 1947 after returning from a stint with a circus down in Mexico. Catherine became active at the Clinton Country Club playing golf, where she was an excellent golfer and with a garden club in Clinton. And Emil missed having a bear. So he got one more bear and named her Snookums after um, Baby, Snooks. Baby Snooks, who yeah. was um, the radio persona for Fanny Bryce. And they performed together from 50 to 53, and then Emil retired for the final time. Very interesting. So, um, Deb, you, you know, obviously you had a close relationship with your uh, grandparents. You grew up there in uh, Connecticut yourself. Uh, you live in a house now, don't you, that, that they were living in? Yes, I live on in the house, the family homestead with the barn out back where the original barn was where he practiced and had the bears and made the props right next door to where I live. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and he made stilts for the bears and he made stilts for us. And he made, had um, bottles, wood, heavy wood bottles that the bears had to maneuver around and um, many things that um, he made for the bears were still here, I rem as I recall. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the, that's this is the barn, that's the, the barn, barn currently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The house was built in 1750, and it's the same house that the Winters bought and where young Emil boarded, and then Dib's grandparents bought it from the Winters in 1924. After my father, grandfather had converted one of the barns to his bear, for his bears, and he decided to buy the property. Mm -hmm. So this is, I guess, uh, at the property itself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, yes. Uh, you can see some of the uh, stage there that he's built and then, uh, you know, things like uh, the bicycles and, and the and, na and, some of the and neighborhood kids would come over and watch him practice on a regular basis. I'm and that's sure where those did. children were there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the purchase of the property seems to have coincided with when he became a, um, a naturalized citizen. So, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about um traveling uh, away from the circus when he was doing some of the other things. Uh, one of the photographs that you provided me with, which I really uh, was interested in, uh, is uh, actually uh, this picture here of, of their rig at a time when, uh, you know, you didn't have an Airstream necessarily to go from town to town. I imagine that they carried the bears in this uh, in the trailer, right? 
on on Route One, there was no turnpike then. Everything was on Route One to Boston or to New York or wherever they were on probably bumpy roads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a lot of uh, not a lot of shock absorbers in those uh, cars too at that time. Uh, this is a, another uh, great. Uh, we talked about vaudeville. Uh, this is at the very end of broad of, of vaudeville. I don't know if that's at the Palace Theater in New York or where, mm -hmm. but as you can see, Snookums is uh, right there on the bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, just really uh, you know a long history in uh, show business. And this is your grandmother, right? This is my mother. Mother, your mother. Yeah. This is my mother. She uh, went with them uh, when they. She was with them, and when they were getting ready to do the movie with Jack Menny, and they were there for a few weeks. And she went to the Paramount School, and that's her with one of the dogs from what? What is it, Peggy? Our, our gang. Our gang. Little rascals. Yeah. It looks like uh, that that's, dog from the, little that's the dog from the Little Rascals, <laughs> yeah. and that's yeah. my mother, and she got to attend Paramount School. Mm -hmm. Well, she was uh, quite an attractive young lady uh, at that time too. So, um, what did you find out about your your grandparents that you didn't know about? Uh, was it, were there any surprises from Peggy's uh, research? Peggy was a very good researcher and uh, did a lot of footwork and a lot of internet work. And um, it was just wonderful having it all pulled together. After, and a lot of things had been saved over the years and put together in a chronological fashion. And just wonderful to have it preserved because very frequently um, there, well, there's, there was so little unknown about my grandfather to have all this together and in a wonderful book is just terrific. And again, the book, uh, it's the Pallenberg's uh, Wonder Bears from the Beginning, right? Isn't that the name of the book available on Amazon? Correct? Yes. yes. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, at, um, any, or, or any board, um, brick and mortar store that whose supplier is Ingram. So this is a, a flyer for Snookums here. Uh, Snookums obviously uh, is recognizable by that little V uh, on his chest. That's kind of how we can tell who he is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, she, it's a she. And she, she, she they're all she's. They're, they're all, all she's. Opens, and she is a Himalayan, um, a Himalayan wonder bear. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then there was the bear, the basketball, is this Foo, the basketball playing bear? Or? No, that's Fritz, isn't it, Dib? Fritz. This could be Fritz. And frequently my grand, this is at Schofield Barracks. I believe it. it's in high, in Hawaii. In Honolulu, and yeah, that's. Honolulu. And my grandfather would make a point to bring the bears and show them to the servicemen when he was in town for a circus. And again, mm -hmm. this was probably the E.K. Fernandez Circus, which circus. was uh, always uh, seen there at the Scopio Barracks. In fact, there mm -hmm. was a uh, performance on December 6th, 1941, the night before uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed. There, there was a Fernandez Circus there, probably mm -hmm. in that same um, gymnasium. Hmm. But, yeah, little little sidebar to this whole uh, thing here. A uh, couple more pictures. I think uh, this is going to be Snookums I'm going to give you here. Um, or it, that's Snookums, right? Uh, no, that, that's Blue. Oh. That's Blue. That's Snookums, right? There. That's Snookums <laughs> and, and Baby. It, that The chair was, was part of the act. The chair had to, the bear had to get the chair in the proper position and then sit on it. And that was part of the part of the act. Yes, that's Foo. That's Foo. Yeah, that's Foo Snookums. And Snookums mm -hmm. okay. That's Snookums. And that little chair. Board. Yeah, and that little chair that Snookums had. She had the same chair when she was a tiny little cub. Mm -hmm. now, that's Snookums again. Mm -hmm. We saw the. That's Schofield Barracks. Schofield, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then. Uh, that's Snookums with her concertina. I thought right. it was Lawrence Welk for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and there he the, is. He comes there, yeah. In a, that's a classic costume of my grandfather's and the boots and the pants and the shirt. And toss, mm -hmm. that was one of the first things he started to teach the bears when he got a new bear was to toss a ball to him, to the, her. Mm -hmm. where, did he ever, do you, or did you find out in your research where he acquired these bears? He would go to 
the early ones we think came from, well, Peggy can address that, but later he would go to the zoo in the Bronx Zoo and when they got some animals and he would just go there and observe for hours and he would look for a bear that had the characteristics that he was looking for. And that's where some came from. But we think the earlier ones came from either Hagenbach or um, someone else, Peggy knows. Well, you know, th these are, uh, you know, obviously they're wild animals, but uh, you talked about kind of the characteristics and personalities mm -hmm. of the bears. Uh, this is a great example of uh, taking one on a, on a cable car in San Francisco. San Francisco <laughs> yeah. and how yeah. comfortable he is with the bear and there are people close by. Yeah. And uh, it's just wonderful to see a cable it's car. Mm -hmm. Nobody's sitting yeah. next to the bear, but. <laughs> yeah. and, that's again, but and, and then this is, this is in, I believe Rhode Island. Very interesting. And uh, Carousel. yeah, just uh, really, uh, you know, great uh, images too that kind of, you know, take us back in, in time here. And of course, I, I love uh, the photograph that we've got of you with your grandparents too. That's not you, but <laughs> that's not you, but um, that is, okay. right? That's, that's <laughs> here in Clinton, right here on, here and here I am as a, as a young, young girl. Yes, with my grandparents. Right here yeah. in Clinton, Connecticut. Well, you haven't you haven't changed at all. <laughs> the, the, uh, but I did. We had this here. That, so there's your grandparents on the right. Tell us a little bit about the gentleman uh, to the left of your grandmother and the lady he's with. That is my grandmother's son by a previous marriage that was in that she had in Holland at, and lived with at the inn up until he was about two years old. And prior to her coming to the United States, States. prior to her meeting your yes. uh, grandfather. And they they corresponded over the years with letters. And um and my grandmother did travel every couple of years for a while there by ship and go over and visit relatives in Holland. We don't know if you know what happened if she saw him there, who she's visited with and so forth, but she did go for lengthy visits, but then ultimately they did have a reunion we know of in 1963. Tell, mm -hmm. tell them about 1967 though, Dip, the knock on the door. Yes. When he came to the door, my mother was kept in the dark about the fact that she had a, a stepbrother. It was sort of unheard of back then. And sure. um, my grandparents kept it to themselves and, Leo Souverine, my grandmother's firstborn son, knocked on the door and took a taxi from New York City to Clinton, not knowing how far it was, knocked on the door and introduced himself as um, Catherine's firstborn son, Leo Souverine. And at the time, my mother and my grandmother were in Florida, in Sarasota, where they had a home. And my father called them and said, and told them the news. <laughs> and wow. then they, he, he came to meet his American family. That he came to amazing. meet his, and after that, he came regularly to Clinton and became very friendly with my parents. And it was, a, it was wonderful. So your grandfather uh, retired in uh, late 1940s, came back uh, for three more years. And then your, your uncle uh, he did continue with the act mm -hmm. also in the 1940s, right, uh, mm -hmm. Emil Jr.? Mm -hmm. Yes, he he was in 47. After they retired, they gave him Fu and Laura, the ones that are in the movie Sensations of 1945 with him. And after Dib's grandfather retired the second time, he was given, given Snookums. Now, I've been told recently that Fu and Laura are actually, he, he then lived in Texas, and he performed until I believe it's 1961. And then retired from that and wound up doing actually set work, uh, carpentry set work at a theater for a while. But there I've been go. told recently that Fu and Laura actually buried on the grounds where he lived in Texas. But I have we have no idea whatever happened to Snookums. He settled in New Brunsville, Texas, which was oh, a German yeah, community, yeah. which is a German community and obviously felt very comfortable and liked it there. And he um, was with 
Hannah, and apparently it was it's very very beautiful there, and they were near a river. Mm -hmm. So um, your grandfather himself, this is a picture probably taken mm -hmm. pretty late in life. Mm -hmm. uh, he passed away in 1963. Um, did he, you know we talked a little bit about him reflecting back on those early circus days um i'm sure you wish that you could talk to him now mm -hmm. for sure oh, for oh sure. yeah but we have his handwritten memoir um after dib and i started working on the book and i was scanning photos i kept saying there got to be contracts somewhere your family saved everything what happened to the contracts and she is living in the house that she grew up in that her mother grew up in that her grandparents had and then she went and started looking in the closets and she called me one day between Christmas and New Year's 2021 and said, I found two cartons. And there were all the Orpheum uh, contracts, all the Barnum and Bailey contracts, the movie contracts. And then Laura was on Broadway for a whole year in a Jerome Kern, Oscar Hammerstein musical. And music in the air. <laughs> yep. Amazing. So um, he passed away uh, on, on a trip back to the United States, right? Right. On a trip. They had gone to... Europe, the family trip around Easter time. And he he came, unfortunately, he passed away on the ship coming back. And there you can see his gravestone, which is in the Clinton, Connecticut, Indian River Cemetery. And he was born in 1888, which my father always called the pretzel year. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, um, you know, he certainly uh, is someone who today we we look back on as being a real pioneer when it came to uh, animal training, obviously presenting bears. But until this book that uh, Peggy and uh, De Burma have put together, again, it's the Pallenberg uh, Wonder Bears. Uh, from, again, the, the title is From the from the Beginning, correct? Mm -hmm. Pallenberg Wonder Bears from the Beginning. From the Beginning. The beginning. Uh, is available uh, on Amazon at brick and mortar uh, stores and so forth. Uh, it really gives us an insight into this uh, performer who was such an important part of the American circus uh, in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, in 19, I guess it was probably, it, your, your grandfather had been dead for a few years, uh, but that was when uh, your grandmother received this letter uh, when he was elected into the Circus Hall of Fame. Uh, first, of course, in Sarasota, uh, and now in Peru, Indiana, uh, they still can learn more about the Pallenberg Bears and your your grandparents, really. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you know, this is any time we get together to talk about um, circus history, I think is a lot of fun. Um, you know, the Pallenberg Bears, I've learned a lot about them uh, just talking to the two of you tonight. But uh, again, there's so much more to learn. Uh, I thought it would be interesting to show a little uh, Christmas card here from the Pallenbergs and Snookums. So uh, this must have been probably in the early 1950s. And and you can see the house up there on the right. And is that the Sarasota house on the bottom? There? Yes, it is. 441 Parkview Avenue, Sarasota. Yes, it is. And the house in Clinton is in the right. Mm -hmm. That's where well, he wrote his, mem mem his handwritten memoir that's in the book, was in well, Sarasota. I really want to uh, thank you both again, Peggy Adler, uh, DeBurma Burnham, for joining us tonight for uh, this episode of Circus History Live, really an opportunity for us to kind of dig into the Hallenberg Wonder Bears, uh, learn more about Emil and Catherine and Snookums and Foo and uh, all of the other bears that were such an important part of the act over the years. Uh, we urge you to join us again for another issue uh, edition of Circus History Live. It's our monthly opportunity to talk about what's going on in circus history of the past and today and even of the future. Uh, if you are not already a member, we urge you to join the Circus Historical Society by going to circushistory.org uh, and you can find information there. Bruce, uh, and that concludes another episode. It does, it does. And, and thank you so much, uh, DeBurma and Peggy. Uh, we appreciate you spending time with us this evening. Uh, it's just great to hear all this great history. And uh, I live in Connecticut, so I'm even more in, in, interested in it because it's it's local history for me as well. I'd also like to thank our host, Chris Berry, CHS Vice President, who and behind the scenes, a CHS trustee, Anya Norris, who recorded tonight's program and also handles our social media and YouTube channel. 
And finally, I would like to thank all of you for attending tonight's program. If you're not already a member, as Chris said, please consider joining the Circus Historical Society. It's only $60 a year, and you get a wonderful journal, uh, The Bandwagon. It comes out quarterly. Um, and uh, just go to circushistory.org. So without further ado, I wish everyone a wonderful holiday season. And thank you again, everyone, for coming tonight. And Peggy and DeBurma, it was terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good night, everyone.